Hello and welcome to this live 2D muzzle tutorial! Today I will be showing you a little bit on how to do snouts in live 2D and we're looking at X and Y movement today. So here we have my test dummy! Yay! It's Bowen the bear! He has a sort of middle length snout, as bears do, but he's a pretty good example to use. So to start off with we're just going to go through a little example of how my movement looks like. So here we have angle X and Y, I already have them linked because he is fully rigged. And we can see, up, down, left, and right, and in the corners. <laughs> now you'll notice, the muzzle is moving with the face. It kind of looks 3D, but it's not, it's a drawing. <laughs> so how do we do it? How do we make this muzzle pop out when he looks left and right and up and down? It's not like this nose. I don't have a muzzle. I only have this little flat nose. So, I have two parameters linked to snout movement for the angle X and angle Y of the face. We have the whole snout. This is literally the whole thing. You can drag it everywhere. <laughs> He's not going to appreciate that later though. Let's put that back. And then we have the mouth. Whoa. You may also notice that I have the nose linked to the mouth. You don't necessarily have to do it this way, it might be easier to separate the nose. But for this particular case, I have the nose linked to the mouth. So we're going to want to create three keyforms on angle X. We'll try angle X first. So we press this button. Boom, we've got three keyforms. But it doesn't move yet. That's because we haven't set it up yet. So we want to drag this over to the left. So what do we do here then? Well, we want the... Obviously we want the muzzle to follow the face. Much like a normal nose, it should turn to the left when the face turns to the left, obviously. <laughs> so here he's looking over to the left, but obviously the snout hasn't moved yet because we haven't set it yet. So what we're going to want to do is use the left arrow key and then we want to push it all the way over here. Now it still looks really flat. That's because we've only just moved it. And the nose is still in a central position on the snout itself. So what you're going to want to do is take your parameter here. And if you've got it separated for the nose, then you're also going to want to move the nose separately. And then we want to shift this over here. And generally I prefer to have the nose sitting on the edge of the snout line. This is so it makes it look like it's on the very edge of the snout itself. Makes it look a little bit more 3D as if it's popping out of the face. Now it's still looking a little bit weirdly proportioned, right? What we're going to have to do is squeeze in the left side. So we'll pull this in and this corner as well. We want to squish that in a little bit more. Like so. It's already looking quite a lot better, huh? 
What I also like to do with the nose is push it up a little bit more. We're going to want to push this forward a bit. You want to drag this deformer forward. Whoops, just like so. Now let's have a look at it. Looking pretty good, huh? <laughs> and you always want to go back and test it to see how the movement looks. So if we go back to the center and then back to the left, pretty neat, huh? So what about the other side? Is there an easier way to do it? In fact, there is an easier way. <laughs> so we want to go into show and then there's an option here which says onion skin. Onion skin setting right at the bottom here. So if we press modeling, it will come up with a phantom snout. Now this is showing the keyframe that I've already got set up. So this is going to be the middle, so the default. Now make sure number of onion skins between keys is set to zero so that you only get one ghost pop up for each keyframe. If you added more, for example two, it's going to show more of a ghost because it will show the in-betweens basically. So how does this help us? Well, if we can see, if we move it back to the center, it's left us the ghost of the left side. And that's pretty handy to have because if we're setting up the right side, it gives us an idea of how far we moved the left side as well. So we can go ahead and set this one up. And then we have our mouth. And then we're going to want to squish these in again. Squish this bit out. So we have a basic idea here of the X movement, so if we tried it... Not too bad, huh? So how about the Y movement? The up and down? How are we supposed to do that? It's actually pretty similar to the X and Y, just... vertically. <laughs> So let's go ahead and set up three keyforms for angle Y. We're going to want to do that with our snout and our mouth deformers again. So with our snout selected, we're going to do angle up first. So if we drag that to the right, you'll see my guy puts his head up, but the snout has been left behind again. Oh dear. So naturally we're going to want to move this up with the up arrow. Up it goes. And you can see you have left the onion skin setting on, so we can see the ghost of where it used to be. So if we look at it now, it looks pretty flat again because the nose and the mouth hasn't moved yet. So we're going to want to select our mouth parameter and we're going to want to move that one up as well. And I generally have it so the nose is just sitting above the snout line. 
like so. You're going to see that it still looks a little bit flat. What we're going to want to do is also deform the mouth and the nose upwards. Because we should be able to see more of his chin or the underside of the snout and the underside of the nose as well. So if we move this upwards, we're going to want to use the middle part of the deformer to do this. You can also drag this top little bit up just to make that underside a bit bigger. Now something else with the up and down movement is you'll see that the underside of the snout is pinched in. So with looking up we're going to want to stretch it out on the underside. Just stretch it a bit more, like so. There, so you can see more of the underside of his jaw. And we're looking pretty good, huh? Now how about the down movement? It's stuck in the middle of his face, he looks really weird, huh? Let's go back to the snout, and we're going to move the whole thing down again. So we're actually going to turn onion skinning off for this part, just because you can see the ghost is sort of getting in my way here. So we can turn that off, there we go. So what do we do here with him facing down? Looks a bit strange. Well, let's grab his mouth again, and we're going to want to move this down further as well. But now you can see we have the issue of his mouth is literally clipping outside of its snout. What do we do? <laughs> so we have to grab our deformer and we're going to shrink it a bit. Shrink, 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 right here. But now the nose looks strange, so we need to actually deform the nose down, because we should be able to see more of a top side here. And we're going to want to pinch this in just a little bit, just so the mouth doesn't look too strange. So now if we go up and down, that looks way better, right? So what do we do now? We've got angle X. An angle Y. But what about the top corners? If I want to look up left, up right, it doesn't do it. Look. This is because you need to link them together first. So if we go here, we want to link together our angles. And then you'll notice. Oh! It's not working. You have to make sure that you're synthesizing your corners. So if we select both the mouth and the snout, and then we're going to make sure that we've got angle X and angle Y selected. We press this button here and synthesize corners. This screen will pop up right here and you're going to want to press OK. And then let's try it again. It's working! You can look in both corners. It will look a little bit strange, but it gets you the basic idea of the positioning where it should be. 
So, for example, with this top bit, I'm going to want to squish down the nose a bit more because it's clipping through. But overall, it's in just about the right position that I want it to be. It saves a lot of time to synthesize the corners there. And then we can have a look in our viewer here. Ah, looking pretty good, huh? Even without the fixes. Anyway, that will be all for today. If you enjoyed this tutorial or you have any questions at all, feel free to leave us a comment and we will try and get back to you as soon as possible. I look forward to seeing other live 2D creations perhaps. You can find me on Twitter at ArtAlfie. There will be a link in the description for that. <laughs> and I hope you all have a good day. Bye!